Has it ever occurred to you that a comma or even a full stop in a sentence can make a whole lot of difference in meaning? A tiny weeny comma or a dot can change the meaning completely. If you are not careful, you can get into deep trouble with where you punctuate. So, in this lesson, we will venture together and discover that punctuation matters. It really does. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand the function of punctuation, recognize meanings of punctuation. Notice the statement. There is no punctuation here. Just read it. You do know the meaning of a survivor, right? Survivor means a person who copes well with difficulties in his or her life. Aha! Now read this. With the punctuation comma and the exclamation mark coming in, let me ask you a question. Woman without a man is a survivor. Who is definitely the survivor here? The woman, right? See how the exclamation mark enforces that the woman is a survivor. Read this. Another punctuation has been added. The question mark. My question to you is, is the woman still the survivor here? Yes, it is still the woman. But is it a definite statement here? No. With the question mark added, the statement, woman without a man is a survivor, becomes questionable. Follow me on this. Woman without her, man is a survivor. A comma is added after the word woman, followed by another comma after her, and an exclamation mark after survivor. See how the meaning can change with the two commas and an exclamation mark. Who is the survivor here? Yes, right. It is the man who is the survivor here. Not the woman. Here in this statement, woman. Without her, man is a survivor. Notice the punctuation of a full stop after woman, a comma after her, and an exclamation mark after the word survivor. Without a doubt, in this statement, the man is the survivor. So, look at all the five statements. Woman without a man is a survivor. 
woman without her man is a survivor. Woman without her man is a survivor. Woman without her man is a survivor. Woman without her man is a survivor. We know that the meaning changes when we place punctuation at different points of the sentences. So, punctuation matters. As I stated earlier, if you are not careful with your punctuation, the meaning can change. Thus, you need to be careful both when you write and when you read because punctuation matters. I am sure you have seen this punctuation when you read a text. Come, shall we go through this punctuation together? Comma, semicolon, colon, Exclamation mark, question mark, and the dash. These are some of the punctuation that you will come across when you read a text in the Moet reading paper. We are going to read the short paragraph together. Before that, allow me to give you the gist of this text, which is on the re-emergence of two diseases, rickets and tuberculosis, that were believed to have been stamped out. And the reason for this re-emergence is greatly linked to migration. Are you ready to read this paragraph? together? Shall we? On December 29th, the Department of Health confirmed what doctors have long suspected. Rickets seems to be on the rise. The disease, thought to have been eradicated in the 1950s, stunt growth and deforms the skeleton, characteristically causing both legs and worse. Now that we have read the paragraph, shall we look further into the function of the punctuation in the paragraph? What is the function of a comma? The comma. We use a comma to set off the parts of reference that directs the reader to the exact source. So the comma in this sentence on December 29 sets off the reference to the discovery of the Department of Health, which is Ricketts seems to be on the rise. Likewise, the comma after the word skeleton explains further the deformity that happens to the skeleton causing both legs and worse. Are you able to see the function of the comma here? that we will look at in this paragraph is the colon. What is the function of a colon? The colon, one of the uses of the colon is to introduce information that illustrates, explains 
or restates the preceding information. Thus, in the sentence, on December 29th, the Department of Health confirmed what doctors have long suspected, colon. Ricketts seems to be on the rise. So the colon indicates that Ricketts seems to be on the rise as the Department of Health has confirmed what the doctors have long suspected. Now, we move to another punctuation, the dash. We will look at two uses of the dash. One, you use a dash to signal hesitation. The dash is to indicate an abrupt change in thought within a sentence or to show hesitation. Two, you also use a dash to emphasize. You use a dash to set off and emphasize supplemental information. Look at the first dash in the paragraph. The dash that comes after the word disease gives you an abrupt change in thought or to show hesitation. How so? With the words thought to have been eradicated. Let's move on to the second dash after the year 1950s. The dash here gives you supplemental information or more information on the Ricketts disease which stunts growth and deforms the skeleton. We refer to the text again. Why don't you read silently? the comma, colon, and dash help you to understand the text better? Shall we move on to a comprehension question now? What is true about rickets? A. It can be easily cured. B. It is a migraine-related disease. And C, it was eradicated in the 1950s. Here, we are not looking for the correct or best answer. What I want you to take note of is option C to this question. Option C states that it was eradicated in the 1950s. The question now is, would you choose option C as your answer? If yes, why? If no, why not? No, you can't choose option C. Because of the dash and the word thought to. As thought to means, it was assumed to. However, 
option C states, it was eradicated, meaning that it was definitely eradicated, wiped out completely. So that is why you cannot choose option C. Another question that we can work on together here is, a child suffering from rickets is likely to A. Have short legs B. Be fair in complexion C. Grow at a much slower rate Would you pick option A, B or C? Choose option A. Why? Because the paragraph talks about bold legs, but not short legs. You cannot choose option B either. And why so? Because nothing in the paragraph tells you of fair complexion. Yes, yes, and yes. C is the correct answer. Why? Stunt growth has something to do with growth at a much slower rate as stated in the paragraph. Are you able to catch that? Surely you are able to. Reading the text with the punctuation helps you to understand the meaning of the whole paragraph better. So, what have we learned about the comma, the colon and the dash? Come. Let us recap. The comma. We use a comma to set off the parts of a reference that directs the reader to the exact source. The colon. One of the uses of the colon is to introduce information that illustrates, explains, or restates the preceding information. The dash. One, we use a dash to signal hesitation. The dash is to indicate an abrupt change in thought within a sentence or to show hesitation. We also use a dash to emphasize. We use a dash to set off and emphasize supplemental information. Would this be correct? Let's eat, Grandma. No, no. Don't forget the comma. Otherwise, poor grandma. So, with the comma, the meaning is clear. Let's eat, grandma. Aha! What do we have here? A letter. It's always good to receive one such as this. Exciting, right? Let's read. My dear pet, the dinner we shared the other night, it was absolutely lovely. Not in my wildest dreams I ever imagined anyone as perfect as you are. Could you? if only for a moment. 
think of our being together forever? What a cruel joke to have you come into my life only to leave again. It would be heaven denied. The possibility of seeing you again makes me giddy with joy. I face the time we are apart with great sadness. P.S. I would like to tell you that I love you. I can't stop thinking that you are one of the prettiest women on earth. Hmm, a profession of undying affection. Imagine receiving the same letter the very same letter, but punctuated at different points. Shall I read? Here goes. My dear, pack the dinner we shared the other night. It was absolutely lovely. Not. In my wildest dreams, could I ever imagine anyone as perfect as you are? Could you, if only for a moment, think of our being together forever? What a cruel joke to have you come into my life only to leave again. It would be heaven. Deny the possibility of seeing you again makes me giddy. With joy, I face the time we are apart. With great sadness. P.S. I would like to tell you that I love you. I can't. Stop thinking that you are one of the prettiest women on earth. Do you realize the difference the punctuation makes? The first letter is a clear profession of undying affection. The second letter is sure to jolt Pat onto her feet. The only thing separating one letter from another is, of course, punctuation. Did I not clearly say punctuation matters? I know I have enjoyed teaching you this lesson on punctuation matters. I hope you did too. If you did, then through this lesson, you were able to understand the function of punctuation, recognize meanings of punctuation. Thank you and goodbye.